find yourself spending a lot of time laying out the same layout consistently and accurately again and again in magazines, newspapers, or other types of periodicals, it's worth your time to spend investing in consistent and accurate styles. So let's take a look at how we can optimize this. With this text frame, I have to lay all of this out. Well, if I come over to this object style and click on newspaper, I'm done. Now wasn't that hard? Okay, let's take a look at how I was able to do this. I'm going to go back to the beginning, to the start here, and the way I've got this done is by creating paragraph styles and nesting them in one after another. So I'm going to begin by selecting this first paragraph, and I've got a paragraph style called Headline. Next I've got another one here for my byline, I'm going to call it Byline. The next paragraph is my intro text, and then I want to apply body text to the rest of this. Now if I try to apply body text to all of this, I can't select all of it. So what I'm going to do is go into the story editor by hitting Command Y or Control Y on the PC. And inside the story editor, I can see all of my overset text. So I'm just going to click and drag in here to grab the rest of this all the way to the end. And then I can just apply body text to the, everything else. There we go. That's looking pretty good. But right now, this it really isn't laid out the way that I want. I want this to be multiple columns. So if I go to the top of the screen and make this be two columns, it's looking a little better, but I really want three. Unfortunately, when I go to three, I don't see any copy anymore. That's because the first column became overset because my headline wouldn't fit. So I'm going to go back down to two columns again. And what I want to do is with this headline selected, I really want it to go across all of these columns. And previous to CS5, you really would have had to cut and paste this out into its own frame, and it would have been a lot of work. Well, now there's a new feature called Span Columns. With this headline selected, I can go right up at the top, and this little widget is called Span Columns. So I'm going to change it from None to Span 2. And now you can see it is spanning across the top of this column. If I increase this to three columns, we see that it's only going to two, because I said it's only going to span two columns. But I can increase this to three. And if I put it at three, it will just stay at three as I add more columns. If I want it to be all the way across no matter what I'm doing, I'm just going to change it to span all. Now it's consistently across the top, no matter what. I'm going to put this back to three because that's what I want. And now I want to repeat this process for the rest. So I'm going to grab my byline, and I'm going to have this span all. And then I'm going to go to my intro text and say we're going to have to span this for two. So that's looking pretty good. Well, now that I have this laid out the way that I like it, I want to update my styles so they reflect the changes that I've made. So inside this paragraph style right here called intro text, I'm just going to right click and choose redefine style. I'm going to go to the subhead and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut command option shift R or control alt shift R on the PC to redefine it quickly. And I'll repeat it again on the headline. Now that I have all of this done, it'll be much easier to apply these styles to my layout. But I don't want to have to go and manually do this one by one because I know in this instance it's always going to be consistent. I'm always going to have a headline always followed by a sub, by byline, followed by intro text, followed by body text. It is always going to be this. So to take advantage of the fact it's consistent, I can use an automation feature called Next Style. Inside my headline style here, I'm going to right click my mouse and choose Edit Headline. Inside here, I'm going to switch Next Style from the same style to the next one. In this case, it's going to be Byline. So I'll just change this to my Byline, and we'll click OK. Now I'm going to go to my byline and repeat the process. When I edit the byline style, I know that it's going to be intro text next. So I'm just going to change this to my intro text and click OK. And after my intro text, I know that it's always going to be body text. So I'll switch to body text next. So now I've got body text as the next one. I don't have to do anything to body text at all because body text will just be repeating itself throughout the end of the page. Now that I have all of this done, I'm just going to go back and remove all the formatting and make this be basic paragraph. So if I want to do this very quickly, what I can do is save all of this as an object style because I know that this is always going to be a three column layout. So with this frame selected, I'm going to go to my object style menu and I'm going to option or alt click on new object style and I'm going to name this newspaper. Now rather than just leaving this as a three column layout, I want to go to take advantage of a feature called Paragraph Styles. So when I click on the name Paragraph Styles, it will put a checkbox here, 
and it will let me apply a paragraph style to the first paragraph in the story. Well, I want this to be headline because I know that it's going to start with headline every single time. After headline, I want it to apply the next style, which is what we just set up. Now that I have this done, I'm just going to go back and make this be a one column layout again. Let's grab this and go to number of columns. And I can just click on newspaper. And voila, it is all done in one click. I can lay out the entire page as long as it's always consistent. Now let me just show you what would happen if you, for some reason, forgot a byline. I'm going to do an undo to remove all of this. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete the byline. So for, for whatever reason, the writer forgot to include a byline. Well, when I add this, it's not going to be pretty. Because it grabbed the next paragraph and made it look like the byline, and then grabbed the next paragraph for my intro text. And this isn't really what I wanted, so in this case, that really isn't a good idea. So you have to be careful that you always have the consistent and accurate styles and the text in the order that you expect. So I'm just going to go back here and make this look good. Now that I have all of this done, there is one part that I can't completely automate, but I can make it a lot easier. Down here I have this little list, and I want this to be a bulleted list. Well, I've already made a paragraph style using the bullet feature, so I'm just going to call this a list, and we have this as a nice bulleted list. But I don't like how this looks all bad by itself, and I'm just going to quickly zoom in here so we can see this a little better. This doesn't look good, and a lot of people probably spend their time just saying, well, I'm just going to cut this to the clipboard, draw a new frame, paste it in, and just kind of set it here next to this. Well, that doesn't look good. It's not going to flow with the copy. We really don't like that, and that's really not ideal. So we're going to take advantage of this span columns feature, but do the inverse. We can split it. So with this selected, I'm going to go to my span columns again at the top, and I'm going to switch it to split two. Now that it's split two, it cut in half directly. If I want to go more, I can split three, Dare I go to split four? Eh, that doesn't look very good. So we're just going to leave it at split two. And if I redefine my style here with this, at any point, if I ever want this to look like that again, I can just click on my style, and there we go. Now we've got it made. So taking the time to invest in making your templates more accurate with all of the styles and taking advantage of nested styles and next style and the span and split column features, you can really save yourself a lot of time. Thank you.